her. Yeah. And I'm probably going to need more salt, Susan. The project is a continuation of a project I did in Antarctica, which was having 99 of these spheres, different diameters, much, much bigger, um, that was creating a reverse sky onto the ice. And it's also peak preview at a project I'm going to do at the Salt Flats in Bolivia. And what this is, is the idea of either a black hole or that's in the middle of a spiraling um, galaxy that's also in the middle of a hexagonal structure. Uh, when the piece is done, it will be in the middle of this triangle. And Pythagoras used to talk about how the entire cosmos was covered in a hexagonal pattern. So this is a chunk of what I'm going to be doing also as a performance in Bolivia. And uh, it's with salt and the sphere is blue made out of fiberglass. And I'm also working with Molly McKinley, where she's doing a, a sculpture up in front. And we have photographs that are of our installations that are side by side to show uh, the, two, the two different artists working in installation. And um, yeah, the salt, why did you choose salt? salt. Uh, for a number of reasons. Salt is one of the purest forms. I like to work with pure material, like pure pigment, pure gold, pure salt. I like the something happens alchemically when you work with pure materials and you put them together with very simple forms. Uh, it affects how we, how we look at things. It, it, it affects us alchemically. It changes something. So that was one of the reasons. The other is salt is one of, that we can't live without it. And uh, politically, you know, there's been lots of wars over salt and um, what's going on with the ocean and um, a lot of different, so there's different levels of why I use it. I also used it because it is so pure white, it's actually table salt, and the pure white looks like uh, snow um, or ice that I did the project at both the North and the South Poles. And um, tell me a little bit more about uh, the, uh, the geometrical um, arrangement of okay, the Okay, so I've always been interested in, uh, like I said, Pythagoras believed he had his um, students meditate on the hexagonal pattern in the cosmos. And in 1996, I represented the U.S. for the Cairo Biennale at the pyramids, where I overlaid a pattern of a hexagonal structure, both in the sky and on the ground, uh, that showed that this kind of sacred geometry that maybe exists that we can't see. So what this is, is a chunk of that. It's one piece of that hexagon. It's, it's a triangle at this point. So I'm very interested in sacred geometry. I'm interested in alignments and in aligning the body to the earth and to the cosmos. The what blue sphere. Uh, I, um, I've worked with this color since the mid 70s. Um, the reason I use the color is the relationship between the earth and the sky. I'm totally interested in that relationship. And uh, it's, it's, an op it's so opaque the way that I, that I paint it that it's totally, it absorbs light and yet it also reflects light. I'm really interested in, in that. And when people look at it, everybody's, um, you can't tell, like especially on a white surface like this, you can't tell if it's flat, uh, perceptually, all these things. Uh, happen with it. So I'm, I'm really interested in, in the relationship of, of color on on a very blank kind of surface, bright color. And uh, maybe uh, your um, your collaboration with Molly, uh, so um, how did this evolve and, and how did this um, come about? Uh, that's really exciting. We actually met through the artist Susan Kaiser Vogel who introduced us a year ago when I came to New York for the Armory. And Molly and I actually came to the old school here and we met Natalie Kovacs, who's our curator. And we met her in a really interesting way. We came up to uh, the space where she was, we didn't know her. We were just looking at the exhibit and all of a sudden 
this woman jumps out and said, hi, I'm the curator here. If you have any questions, you know, ask me. So, and then it turned out that uh, when we exchanged business cards that she had known of me because a friend of hers was on his way to a project that I did uh, with the Getty Museum for their performance festival, get, the PSD performance festival, which was of using 300 people uh, in red suits coming down a mountain, making a red line. And so when she found out who I was, she was like so excited and put me immediately in that show. And then when she found out about this show, very sh not that long ago, she called us both and said, I'm thinking about the two of you have to be in the show together. And the show is called New Mysticism, so we really thought there was all this incredible relationships. And then Susan Kaiser Vogel has been helping me because uh, she's also a mason and into sacred geometry. Uh, mason meaning smooth as bricks and, in her work. And um, so she's, we're all kind of interrelated. So it's really, really interesting how it's all come together. And what Natalie wanted to do was for each of us to have, each Molly and I to have a sculpture and then to have adjacent um, uh, photographs of our installations so that there was some kind of relationship or not between the two. And so that's what we have. We have photographs and um, slide projection. My, my shirt? So Natalie Kovacs has curated this show that has uh, my work uh, and Lita Albuquerque's work in a conversation with one another. So Lita comes from the West Coast and she has a very West Coast approach to dealing with wide open spaces and she does huge uh, ephemeral installations in Antarctica and in the desert, Mojave. <laughs> and, um, and I'm working in a similar environmental sort of way, but in a very East Coast way, and I'm a, a different generation, of course. So uh, these works kind of have a dialogue about relating to nature and mysticism. Uh, I use a lot of props that are a bit more pop culture, a little bit more store-bought, uh, beach balls, surfboards, that sort of thing. And Lita makes her own balls uh, out of fiberglass and covers them in beautiful cobalt blue. Um, so we have like these two different kind of generational ways of dealing with the idea of mysticism and sight and, um, and different philosophical points too, you know, like she's really talking about alignment um, and all the points and spheres that she works with in her work are about aligning with the stars. Um, and mine are more about satire and dealing with society, dealing with existential philosophy, meeting mysticism. Um, so. This is another sculpture. This is a sculpture of mine called Pony. Uh, and this is made out of uh, jetsam and flotsam from the Hudson River up in Beacon. Uh, so this is like a plastic tip of a canoe uh, filled with foam. And uh, this is an, a weathered old rope. And we have confetti. So it's all this, almost like this Duchampian object of like subconscious, uncanniness, but like funny too, you know? I think of it as like my little pony. <laughs> and then it's hanging from um, this like leather equestrian strap. So, um, yeah. It's incredible. I think it's been in the river for a long time. Um, it, it doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before, uh, but I have a studio up in Beacon on the Hudson River, and I gather these sort of uncanny objects that are almost like the beach is like in between the conscious and subconscious mind for me. So find these strange things and yeah like this is a whale and <laughs> whatever else but um so I, f I find these things and i make large-scale installations out of the jetsam and flotsam and i also create videos based on those installations often in remote sites in nature so um uh, the videos are an artifact of a place that the viewer themselves could not go to um built with these sort of uncanny objects and this one just seemed to be a sculpture so most often their installations are sets for, for video pieces, but this one just had its own life force as a whale or whatever it is. <laughs>